We are on the south side of Summit Lake by Summit, South Dakota on a game production area that's managed by the Game Fish and Parks. We lease this pasture from the Game Fish and Parks to do early season grazing, trying to control uh, cool season grasses, help to keep them in check and hopefully give the warm season grasses more opportunity, better opportunity to uh, get a better hold out here and trying to work to help them manage their area so it's better for the wildlife. And we're getting some benefit out of it by our cows are getting to eat the grass. We've been working with the game fish and parks for over 20 years, grazing not just this parcel, but three other ones right here in our area, or on the lake here. And been seeing a significant change going from the cool season to the warm season grasses. They want us in here and we try to be in here the first week of May. So we're here to mow things off with the cattle. Working with tenants like Mike and knowing what their goals need to be to make them profitable and to make it worth their time and to manage that with our goals as far as providing the best habitat we can. You got to give and take a little on both sides. It can't all be what the game and fish wants or all what the tenant wants. A lot of these areas got fairly degraded because back in the past our main management practice was no management at all and uh, the Kentucky Blue and brome grass really invaded these native prairies or, or grasslands and uh, they became the dominant species there. Probably about 15 to 20 years ago, we had a co-worker named John Leesner started really trying to progressively manage these grasslands and get them back to the way we wanted them or as close as we could. Cattle were one of the big pushes. Previously, we probably grazed before then, but we would probably do a season long graze once every one out of maybe three or four years and just come back and graze it again. The approach we've been going at now is the heavy spring grazes to really try to knock back that Kentucky Blue and Brome. Here in South Dakota and across the West, um, there's just an awakening that we can't do the public land management without good conscious um, private landowners that are willing to work across boundaries, work across fences. And I think that's what our example here at Summit Lake is where you've got a trusted private producer that works on a relationship with the managers and in turn they trust him to make good solid decisions based on mutual goals. It took some time to build the trust because in the beginning you know we'd come to them with ideas and they might say, nah, I don't know. And not all of our ideas happened right away. Working with Mike McKernan up here on the Summit GPA uh, really makes my job a lot easier. He basically is myself out here on the grassland, so I, I don't have to come out here and, and be watching every little step he makes because I know exactly what he's doing out here is, is exactly what we want done. He knows his plants well, he, he, he's okay with having some weeds out here. He knows uh, it's, it's a cycle and, and with the proper grazing out here, uh, those weeds will, will come and go. He's even uh, collected spurge beetles and spread them out on our public land on his own to try to manage the spurge population. Always sending me cool pictures of stuff he sees out here, so that's always fun too because you know, that's the biggest thing is, you know, we don't have a big crew, so having a guy that you can trust out here doing the right thing is good. So when we do end up coming out here to check it out, it's looking the way we want it to be. I think a lot of people, when they see the cattle on the ground and they see the grass, you know, being utilized or getting, getting nipped down, and they think nothing's going to be out there. Why are they, you know, the private guy's the only one benefiting off of this. But I say to those people, if you come back in the fall or even midsummer and see the change in the habitat, you'll understand why. Um, you have a lot better hunting opportunity out here because of the cattle doing what they're doing on the ground versus if we just did absolutely nothing. It's just nice to see that we've got cattle producers 
understanding so much more about the need for healthy grasslands, healthy wildlife, and we've got managers understanding the need that we also need really healthy, profitable ranchers if this thing is going to work in the long run. In my view, long-term success on game production areas would be having a high diversity of plants out there. The forbs, the grasses, the wildflowers, everything else out there, and seeing the wildlife come back, see the insects that are out there. Diversity, I mean, we hear it all the time, but it's diversity. Diversity in grasses, diversity in the insects and bugs, diversity in the birds. If we've got multiple species of all of them out there, then I think we're being successful.